So dear powerful ladies and women, today we are going to know about empathy. So before speaking about empathy, let me narrate two small stories to you all. And that is my personal stories. So, I still remember. I exactly don't remember the uh, date and time. But what I remember is that it was when I was in Delhi. Then this happened. And I was working with Hamdad Public School. And uh, uh, in Delhi, uh, let me give you some just briefing one or two sentences that Delhi is a place of happening place. And uh, they're uh, under the influence of different cultures from different places. Uh, the people are from different uh, regions for different states. So that's why the culture is like quite a, um, a showing off culture like you know you have to show off your dressing show off your um, wealth and then you have to be well dressed well uh, the makeup and all those things are the jewelries and everything is like quite uh, uh, common and it has to be like appreciated if you are not doing that something you are missing it is like that so Eid is really a such occasion where you know the people they spend money like anything without thinking that what others will think, and even the maids I have seen the people who are working in the house the home maids they also spend so much money on the Eid dresses like uh, I can compare with some other places where the people spend that much money on the marriage dress what the people are spending in Delhi on the Eid dress. So it is just a, a tradition and common. So in one of the Eid, what happened that I have given um, some dresses to a tailor to stitch. And uh, there is also one uh, a tradition over there that you should not have only one dress for Eid. So minimum you have to have like all Fridays new dresses. Then you have to have Alveda new dress. Then you have to have uh, three days Eid new dresses. So total like you know, five or six dresses you have to have. Out of that one has to be very grand and rest of the others has to be like uh, normal. So this is the culture over there. So I gave some dresses to the tailor, the nearby tailor in Okla, and he promised me to some date to uh, give. And as usual, you know, the tailors, they are never on time. So he was also not on time. When I went to the shop, he said that, uh, no, it is not done. One of the dresses is done and rest of the other dresses, I will take time. And uh, then, you know, I got so furious and I started talking to him and shouting at him and, you know, saying so much blah, 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 blah to that gentleman. And then uh, my sister was with me. Then my sister told me that uh, uh, he, she just pressed my hand and said that just keep quiet. I said, why should I keep quiet? He's spoiling my Eid. And uh, I see that how he is going to celebrate his Eid. And this thing, that thing, like many things I said to him. Then I came back home and I really, I was feeling very, very restless. You know, once you said anything bad to the people, it's not, it is just temporary phase that you find pleasure at that particular moment. But afterwards, you it always pricks to your uh, conscience. So when I came back, it was like I was feeling very restless and not at all feeling comfort and not at all feeling uh, at peace. Uh, but anyway, uh, that incident happened. And then after uh, one week, I came to know that uh, that gentleman passed away because he was suffering with some uh, disease, uh, tuberculosis or cancer out of these two diseases. So, you know, I was feeling so guilty, so guilty about that. And, you know, there are so many eats uh, have come after that and gone. And I have uh, taken so many dresses and I have, I have taken, I have gone to so many tailors. But that particular tailor is still in my mind because I have, I was not empathetic towards him because I didn't understand his position that he is suffering with such chronic disease. And uh, I was not aware at that time, maybe because of that. But anyway, whether it is disease or not disease, if he has not stitched on a time, so it is not a great deal. Maybe, maybe uh, the sky is not going to fall on me. If I'm not going to wear even new dress on Eid, how it is going to make much difference? Without dress also, I can celebrate Eid. But being so rude with a person was really a very, very bad thing. This is one incident. Uh, of my life that I never, um, like I never forget this whenever Eid comes, I also always remember that incident and I always feel very guilty uh, about this because I behaved in this way that was not at all uh, the behavior of a leader or behavior of a human being, I must say. 
because empathy is the ability to understand the people's emotions, the people's feelings. And I was very rude and I was not able to understand his emotions and his feeling. That was my real mistake that I accept. And I always narrate this incident to the people so that I can make them understand that at least they should not repeat this, what I have done in my life. We have to understand the feelings of others. We have to understand the situations of others. And then we have to share the feelings as well. Like not only we have to understand that, okay, certain person is going through that, but we have to, um, we have to extend the helping hand also to them. To make it very clear, you know, people, they sometimes are confused empathy with sympathy. And the people think that, okay, sympathy is empathy. But to make it very clear that what exactly is different between these two, uh, I have, I'm going to hear like, have one more story that that my uh, the story of my life that's really going to make it very very clear you know i was in uh, this story is even before the story of taylor okay the story of taylor happened when i was in delhi but this story that i am going to narrate happened in rampur uttar pradesh uh, india up and i was in the hostel and i was studying there and i was in the senior classes and while i was taking some tuitions in the hostel uh, to the small kids and those who were the kids of like uh, the management people, like our secretary and uh, the executive committee members. So they have their small kids. And since I was good in studies, like I was among the top uh, three of the class. So they have uh, given me this responsibility. And I was very fond of teaching at that time also when I was in grade 10, 11, 12. So they know my passion for teaching. So they, one of them has given two daughters uh, to me to teach in the evening. And they used to come to my hostel and there was a common room. I used to sit in the common room with those two girls and then I used to teach them. So it happens like quite for some months and they used to pay me money also for that. Then one day what happened, there was an announcement in the hostel that uh, there was an uh, earthquake to some uh, place. I think it was in um, Africa or somewhere. And the announcement was that you can do some charity for that. You can bring your clothes, you can bring eatables, you can bring money, whatever you want, you can bring for that. So everybody contributed and in our hostel, you know, there were like 50-50% uh, uh, students, 50% in the hostel and 50% were the outsiders, those who used to, you to come, uh, used to come every day. So once when this announcement was there, since I was the uh, secretary of the students union, so I was in the forefront to collect the things and then assemble the things at one place. And then uh, I saw that these two girls have brought uh, a, a very big bag. And then these girls have given that bag for the charity. When I opened the bag, I found that there were so beautiful dresses in that, like all embroidered dresses, silk dresses, very, very beautiful dresses. And uh, then those girls said that, yes, these are our dresses and now we don't wear this. So that's why we are giving uh, for this purpose. The earthquake victims can be uh, benefited by this. Then I took those two girls in a private place. And then I, say, I asked, they see every day when you come to me, you always wear uh, only uh, one dress, like uh, you are repeating the same dress every day. And that is very simple dress. And now you have brought so many beautiful dresses to uh, donate for the charity. So uh, what is the reason? Why, why you, uh, like there is contradiction, I couldn't understand that uh, what exactly is this? Then those two girls, they were like hardly 10 or 11 years old girls. They have given me such a beautiful answer that I still remember that answer. They said that, my mother said that when you go to the hostel, in the hostel there are different types of girls from different places and from different uh, economical background, from different social background. And then when you go there for the, for the tuition, naturally you interact with all of them. So don't wear expensive dresses or don't wear uh, this type of... Uh, uh, embroidery dresses because when they see those who cannot afford they will feel inferior they will feel that okay we don't have such type of dress so that's why wear a simple dress to the hostel so that that type of feeling is not there with them so that's why my mother have fixed this dress particular dress uh, that I we used to wear every day when we come for the tuition class while uh, we have lots of um, good dresses, lots of fancy dresses, lots of embroidery dresses. And that's why mama said that these are like lo lots of dresses are there. A few dresses you can give for the charity. So that's why we have brought for the charity. 
So now, dear friends, in this we can see that the first act of the girls when they brought the dresses to give for the charity is sympathy. Like they sympathize with the victim of earthquake. So they brought some of the dresses of theirs and they are donating. But the second logic or reason that they have given is purely the act of empathy. That they are sacrificing their own wishes. They are sacrificing their own uh, willingness of wearing nice dress and looking beautiful just for the sake of the feelings of others so that other girls should not feel that they don't have those type of beautiful dresses. Who does that in this world? Can we imagine doing that? But those two small girls have taught me that lesson. At that time, I didn't realize that this is empathy, you know, because that time I was not into leadership courses and leadership trainings. So that time I just appreciated it as an act of like, as good act or noble act. And then I prayed to Allah, to may Allah accept their uh, sacrifice. I, I took it as sacrifice on their part. But when I started uh, going into the depth of leadership, then I realized that this is really empathy when we are thinking about the feelings of others. And then I have correlated with this, with the prophet sayings where he has said that if you are wealthy, don't show off your wealth to the people because there are many people, they don't have wealth. If you have children, don't talk about the children in front of those who don't have the children. Otherwise they will feel, they will feel that they don't have children, they are deprived from that. In the same way, if you have a husband who is very loving and caring, don't describe your husband in front of other female because maybe their husband is not as loving, as caring as yours. So this is called empathy. When we are keeping ourselves in the shoes of others and then we are acting upon that. And for this is not something natural. This is something we can acquire. This is something we can learn. And how we can acquire? For that, we have to do some activities, purposeful activities. Then we can develop this empathy in us. So like there are simple act uh, activities given here that is going to develop empathy in us. First of all, we have to listen actively. If anybody is telling you any story, any incident, anything, so first we have to listen very carefully, attentively. They should not feel that we are just ignoring them our ears are there but mind is not there heart is not there this is the first thing and to, we should not interrupt in between giving our judgments giving our remarks uh, oh, no, no need of saying that no need of giving any judgmental remarks just listen to them attentively then we have to keep ourselves in the place of others immediately and then think suppose if any thing happened with the teacher. I have to just go back to my teacher life when I was a teacher. And then I have to think when I was at the position, why are you, what I used to feel over there. Then naturally this particular teacher must be feeling that. And what I was expecting there, mm -hmm. their same teacher must be expecting the same from me. So we have to keep ourselves in the shoes of others. And then validate their feelings. Like without giving any judgmental remarks, we have to first keep their feelings in the circumstances and situations, you know, because situations make the feelings even worse and even good or the bet better or best. It all depends that through which situation you are going through. That, that is the major thing that we have to understand. And it is only possible when we know each other, when we know each other, not only at professional level, but at personal level. What is going on into their lives, into their families, into their personal and professional lives, into their surroundings, everything we have to find out. Naturally, if the person who lives in Kashmir, their feelings and a person who lives in Delhi, their feeling a person who lives in Bihar, their uh, feeling and the person who lives in Karnataka, their feelings, all four feelings are different because they all are going through into four different situations. Their political situation is different. Their social uh, situation is different. So we have to always understand their uh, social background, their socio-economic background, their political background, and then we have to validate their feelings. Then if we can support them, we have to support. If we can support with uh, any professional help, then we should go ahead. Otherwise, 
only by words also we can support and motivate them and and we should not try to worsen the situation by saying oh, oh this happened to you now everything finished now you cannot do anything i have seen many people even exaggerating and making the person even more panic instead of doing that we have to console them we have to try to understand and give them some comf comfort even if you know inside your heart that it is not going to happen it is not going to change the situation but still keep that feeling in the heart on your face by your expressions by your gestures just give them some confidence that it is going to change it will change and there will be different situations and that makes really lots of difference that has magical effects and then avoid making assumptions you know most of the things go wrong because we assume the things our our assumptions are not based on the data based on the facts it is just it came into my mind and i thought that it is going to happen like this quran also says that assumptions is the worst thing and because of many relationships go worse because we are in the habit of assuming the things so if we practice this small small things in our life inshallah we will find that we are going to develop more empathy in us in us we will be making less fun of others we will be having many uh, friends with us we will be having many relatives with us and then nobody is going to uh, uh, nobody is going to be away from us everybody will be attracted towards us and we will be having magnetic personality like magnet attracts all the irons like that we will attract all the human being towards us so this was simple introduction of empathy i just wanted to uh, tell you people so that uh, you also can introspect and observe yourself because everybody has empathy in them but whether we are able to show it or whether we are not able to show it that depends on us so this activity was in today's class that you have to narrate your personal story uh, uh, of the empathy when you face any situa situation and how the people have empathized with you and uh, but since you all are saying that you have not completed your morning challenge i'm going to end here maybe this activity we can do some one uh, some other day because there was a beautiful video that has to be shown to you and on the basis of that video you are supposed to do this activity so maybe we can do this activity in some of other classes this is the video that we are supposed to watch and uh, you want to continue with your morning challenge because you have not completed so you are most welcome you can do that this activity i will keep for the next class whenever i will take next class so uh, anything you have to share uh, it was a wonderful session we learned yes. many lot of things yes ma'am yes thank you a lot a lot of things actually this is not the general class you have shared your feelings your uh, experience your true story from true story we are able to less, uh, learn so many things while we are going through general knowledge uh, it's amazing amazing story alhamdulillah thank you so much ma'am actually the purpose of this course is the same because you know as information i can jot down 50 points to you okay but the information is available on the click anywhere but if the person has gone through that situation and the person is uh, narrating like that, day we heard the uh, heard Aisha ma'am's story, you know. So the we can keep ourselves in her place and then we can visualize and we can see if we were at that place, then naturally we would have not acted as Aisha acted. Now suppose if someone is going to be in that situation now, then naturally the person will recall. And they say, no, 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 I don't have to cry and I don't have to create the scene here. Instead, we have to have very strong and very firm and we have to stand for the situation and we have to tell the world that, okay, I am a strong person and uh, losing parents is not going to break me. Instead, that is going to give me a strength to face the situation. So these stories always give us lots of life, uh, life's practical wisdom that is going to come on our way whenever we are going to face that situation. So thank you, everyone. Now I leave this meeting because you all have to complete your morning task. Try to send to everyone whosoever is very actively participating in this evening sessions and you know them by face, by name. So try to send each one of them because they all will feel happy 
as you are receiving the message, you are happy, they will also feel happy. So just make, make them happy this morning, this evening, not in the morning. Sanna, darling, your voice is not audible. Remove that. It's still not audible. You can write in the chat box. You know, when we I was narrating the girl's story, I was thinking that in our society, it is just opposite. The people will go with the best, the most expensive things, accessories, most expensive, and our social media uh, journalism will highlight that. That day I was uh, listening to some, uh, so I was just going through some videos. Then I saw that five crore sari. Then I was like shocked. The people are wearing five crore sari. They also have the same body, two hands, one body, two legs, one head. Uh, yeah. uh, they have something else to, <laughs> wrap, to cover. And how yeah. they're spending five crore on one sari while like, well, five crore can make so many people having the house, so many people having food, so many people having education. The world is like suffering like anything and the people are spending five crore on one dress. This is really very ridiculous. Very, very. That is That shows the um, shot of empathy in the people. If you are earning more money, what Allah says, it is not for you. It is for the people. That's why I'm giving you more. Otherwise, I would have given you less equal to other person. Why I gave you more? Because you just spend as for your own need and then give to someone else. That is Islamic philosophy. That the, maybe many, many people, they don't understand. Yeah, true. Sana, actually your voice is not coming and you are not typing also in the chat box because we are not able to see your message in the chat box. So anyway, tomorrow we are going to meet, okay? Thank you, everyone. Take care. And Thank continue, you. continue with your activity. Thank Allah Hafiz. Good night. Thank you.